Greetings, family. It is so good to be here with you. My name is Reverend Yanni Davis, a beloved San Diego. Um, I'm with the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Uh, my father is a Presbyterian pastor and has been for 43 years. So that's the tradition I grew up in. And so it's good to be at home. Good to be here with you all. Thank you, pastors, for allowing me this opportunity. We're going to start off like this. It's something a little different. We're going to start out like this. Um, they may never get our culture. They may never get our fads. They may never get our trends and they may never get our dads. They keep them locked up. The system is wicked. He ain't getting to warn people. He's going to run from the ticket because it's prison to pipeline, pipeline to prison. If you're born in America, you're trapped in a system. They don't like our babies think they're destined to fail. So the way they got it set up, got them destined for jail. See, they hate it when we're brilliant, hate when we're resilient. I'll show you how to raise a culture. Picture this, or film it. A world where there's peace and a world where there's justice. Not a world where they kill us, a fire just erupted. See, silence gonna be the reason our people live in fear. So for everybody's silence, I'ma scream it in your ear. They'll run up on you next thing you know, they'll shoot you. Sucking life out your body sickly like a noose do. Who's telling the truth? Who's taking a life? Somebody's child shot in the middle of the night, but we come together for a day or two. True, transforming minds, I'ma show them something new. So when the world comes together and we stop being silent, we gon' kill them with kindness instead of killing them with violence. I hope you can get with that today, family. And that's our prayer as we move into the word today. I don't know if any of you feel this in your spirits, but I feel like I'm still in a season of Lent, right? I kind of feel like I haven't quite gotten to that moment of victory, haven't quite gotten to that moment of ascension, haven't quite gotten to that moment of resurrection. And so I wanted to think about the wind. I wanted to think about what it means for us to come together for longer than a day or two. I wanted to think about the example of Christ and I wanted to think about the unity that we all have as members of the body and the family of God. Acts 2, 1 to 2, the New International Version says, the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Family, I recall my grandfather who was a bishop in the Church of God in Bermuda for many decades. He studied in Texas and when he returned to the island to head to, to the church, he would be found all around town wearing a white cowboy hat and sporting blue suspenders. I remember he would dance all around the church and preach fiery sermons that struck you at your core and made you want to live differently. At the time, I was only eight or nine, but I remember sitting there with my pigtails and frilly dress, knowing that the spirit was surely moving in that place. There was something you could feel in the air that made you want to be a better person and live more like Jesus. See, my grandpa so passionately taught about Jesus and lived like Jesus and showed so many the way as a bishop in the church. My grandfather, Bishop Charles Fubler, had the gift of the spirit within him. Truly, he had the wind. The study of the spirit is what we call pneumatology. Pneumatology is one, the branch of Christian theology concerned with the Holy Spirit. Two, the disposition or influence which fills and governs the soul of anyone. The efficient source of any power, affection, emotion, desire. It's also defined as a movement of the air a movement of the wind, hence the wind itself, breath of nostrils or mouth. And y'all can look that up. You can look it up. Modern day, imagine with me, the scene of Pentecost might look something like this, right? And I told y'all, I grew up Presbyterian, so I know a little something about this Presbyterian life. I, I spent many summers in Louisville, okay? So we have 120 Presbyterian church leaders on a Zoom call. 
we have gathered from all around the world and have gotten together and all of a sudden we realize none of us can speak the same language, all right? So we already have the divide of being isolated, right? I like to think we're, we're insulated for a little time. We already have the divide of speaking different languages. We have the divide of muting and unmuting on the Zoom call, right? We have the divide of how do we work the breakout sessions? How do we get folks in from the way? To cool, we're not speaking the same language, y'all. None of us come from the same background. None of us have the same skin color. None of us identify the same way at, in terms of our sexuality and gender. None of us have the same texture here. And we all have on different clothes. Some of us pajamas. Some of us are dressed fancily up top with some basketball shorts on the bottom. Some of us have on a dress and heels. You get what I'm saying. We didn't speak the same language. We don't look the same. We don't even know how to work the controls on the computer. But we are united under this one thing, this faith thing. United under the idea that God loves each of us unconditionally. We're united under this realm of understanding that suddenly we can communicate. We can see eye to eye. We can clothe the sick, we can feed the hungry, we can visit those that have been imprisoned. All of a sudden we recognize that the spirit is the same no matter where we're tuning in on that Zoom call. Differences no longer matter. We actually come together to impart massive, massive, magnanimous, <laughs> humongous change in the world present day, I question what does the spirit mean for a world that is divided, that relates to one another based on racial lines, based on stereotypes, based on prejudice. A world that finds itself in the midst of a global pandemic with no healing balm in sight. A world that finds itself in the midst of the taking of black lives day after day at the hands of law enforcement and vigilantes. A people that are desperately in need of hope because we cannot breathe. What does the spirit mean to those of us that need a fresh wind? Jesus in his parables and his daily witness walked as if he had something special on the inside. He had that walk about him, had that talk about him. He wasn't afraid to turn tables over and not just be with the people. Jesus was the people. What would it mean to tap into that wind that Jesus had and be the people the world needs? John 14, 26, the King James Version says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach all things or she shall teach all things, depending on how we're thinking about the spirit, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And then we see the miracles that Jesus was always manifesting. Our scripture for today reminds us the wind cannot be denied or contained. See, when the day of Pentecost came, we were all speaking the same language. It didn't matter your age. It didn't matter your socioeconomic status. It didn't matter where you lived and where you came from. We were united in terms of our language. Howard Thurman talks about in Jesus and the Disinherited, how Jesus had a love, love ethic and how this love ethic reached to all parts of the world based off of the mission the life, death, resurrection, ascension of Jesus. And I'll take it a little further. Based off of Pentecost and the witness we experienced there. See, in my research, I found that Pentecost was thought to be a miracle of the mind. I think we need some miracles of the mind for each person spoke in such a profound way that everyone present knew that their essence had been changed. There was an element to the shifting of their language that made true relationship with their spirit 
with each other and with God possible. See, so I'm doing the work of, of being able to communicate with all people, no matter their language, right? And so a few weeks ago, um, I started taking uh, uh, American Sign Language classes, right? Because I want to be able to speak to anyone I come in contact with, right? Somebody out there, I'm sure, can help me with my Spanish a little bit. My brother speaks fluent German in Germany. Maybe he can help me with my German. But there was something about being able to sign. I'm a kidney transplant survivor, and, and while I was unwell, and while I was on 12 hours of dialysis every every night, um, something happened to my hearing, right? right? I, I had a little hearing loss, and, and I wanted to be able to speak to folks and let them know what I was saying, but sometimes I couldn't hear what they were saying to me. So I'm taking it upon myself to make sure I can speak to the nations and generations in the same way we came together at Pentecost, right? And so I wanted to, to put this into the ser sermonic moment really quick. Because as I started, I, I started saying they may never get our culture, they may never get our fads, they may never get our trends, they may never get our dads. They keep them locked up, the system is wicked. He ain't getting no warm people, he gonna run from the ticket. So in the same way, we want all lives to matter. We must recognize in this moment, no one's life will matter until black lives matter. That also breaks down to black lives cherish. It's time to cherish lives in a way we never have before because what? We're all speaking the same language. If we are to function in spirit and in truth, there has to be a renewing of our minds. We must get to a place where the will of God is more important than our individual desires, more important than the pajama pants we have on in the Zoom call, more important than the cars we drive, more important than our individualistic nature here in the divided states of America. See, we must get to a place where God is the ultimate, where spirit is the ultimate, where unity is the ultimate, where compassion is the ultimate thing. This is a place where we love one another beyond our comfort zones and similarities. This is a mental space that says, I love you with the love of the Lord and there's nothing you can do about it. As an extension of God, you are the essence of wisdom. You are the essence of being worthy. You are the essence of the wind. And so as I close, there was one de definition of pneuma that I left out in my intro. It is the intro, it is the definition, excuse me, that defines wind and the spirit in this way. The spiritual nature of Christ, higher than the highest angels and equal to God the divine nature of Christ, the divine nature of Christ. Family, you ask me what in the world is going on. Honestly, I do not know. <laughs> Stuck in this Lenten Groundhog's Day season, I don't know. But the spirit is being poured out upon us to encourage ourselves to empower someone else and to enliven this world. Go forth as the wind family and know that your life is changing and shaping our present day reality. Because of our unity, we will all ascend. We will see Pentecost and the spirit of the living God will fall fresh on us every time we seek God's face. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. Amen.